In this video, we are going to learn how to build an accordion component. Every website you see today is made up of different components. For instance, if you go to upwork.com, you see that everything on the page is actually a component. So this nav session is a component. And this part is what we call the hero session. And it is also a component. Now, when you look at this part, you see that this is also a component. And in this case, this component is repeated three times. The goal of this course is to make sure that you will be able to pick up any project on your own and build it up from scratch to finish using HTML and CSS. I am sure that you have seen the accordion component several times in many websites. For instance, this is youtube.com and this here are accordion components. So without wasting more time, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is to create a new folder. And I'm going to do this using the terminal. If you're on Windows, you can simply open the terminal by pressing the Windows key and then R. If you're on Mac, you can simply search for your terminal. So right here on my terminal, I want to create a folder on the desktop. And to do this, I need to first move into the desktop by simply pressing CD space and then desktop. So now I am on my desktop to create a new folder. You simply press MKDIR, make directory. And here you need to enter the folder name. So let's call it accordion. And now you see this is the new folder. Remember, you can also do the same thing by simply right clicking on the desktop or any part where you want to create this folder and just press new folder. And here you can rename it to whatsoever you want. Good. So now I need to move into this particular folder. So I will simply do CD accordion. And now I am in this folder. So I now want to open this folder on my code editor. So I will simply type code docs, and this is going to open the Visual Studio code for me. In case you are unable to do this, you can simply open the folder by, if you're on Windows, you can simply right click on this and you will see the option to open this folder with your code editor. If your Mac, you can simply drag and drop this folder into your code editor. So right here in this new folder, let's create a file, which we are going to call index.html. And we can simply use the shortcut to generate HTML boilerplate. And here, let's change this title to accordion component. Inside the body, let's simply add a div. And for this div, we are going to give it a class of accordion container. And now inside this particular div, let's add another div. So this is just a container. So remember, instead of typing your div the way we did previously, you can simply type div and then here you put dots. So if you use dots, remember that is a class. So I need a div with a class of accordion. So you see, it is the same thing as typing it this way. So that is just a simple shortcut. Now you can save this file. The next thing we want to do is to open this file on the browser. So we want to run this code. So we can simply click on this go live. In case you are just joining us, in case you are just joining us, you can simply 
come to this part where you see extensions and here simply search for live server this particular extension here you will see install you can simply click on install i already have it installed so when you install this extension you are going to see this particular icon go live all you need to do is to click on this icon and now we have our website and if you look at this you actually see the title accordion component which is the title we added here so now let's actually close this session and you can do this by simply pressing command b so once you click command b you can toggle this particular part and on windows this should be control b here we need to enter a paragraph and for this paragraph we are going to give it a class of title which is the first paragraph here so here we can simply copy this and put this in here after the paragraph we have an icon and to add this icon you can simply type hero icons and open the first result so in here we have access to several icons so we can simply search for the one we want and this is exactly what we need so here you are going to see the option to copy as jss or svg kindly copy the svg then after the paragraph we paste this svg and for this svg let's change the class here let's use title icon all right so let's go back to our goal the next thing is actually to enter a paragraph so this is the opened one the remaining ones are currently closed so for now we see here that this is actually a paragraph so we can simply use this one so after the svg here you simply enter a paragraph and let's put this and the next thing is actually this so this is a list it is an unordered list so here we can simply enter ul for unordered list and we enter the list so we can simply copy this content or you can type anything you want the goal is to be able to build an accordion component all right so next let's enter another list so when you press li and press star you can actually generate the number of lists you want so if you enter four here and hit tab this is going to give you four list items so in here now we can copy all these tests for the first one and paste that here we do the same thing for the second one and we have that here for the third one and also for the last one so for now we only have to concentrate on building this one and then once we are done with this this is actually the same component repeated several times but with different content so once you are able to build one we are going to be able to build the remaining ones so let's finish up with one first so the next thing i'm going to do is actually to wrap everything in here so if you look at the closed one the only thing we can see is this icon and this particular test so we can simply wrap everything in here inside a container and remember the simple container we can use is actually a div so we can cut this and here we can enter a div let's just simply use a class of content and inside this div you can paste you can paste this now we are done with the html the next thing we need to do is actually to style our content so let's go back to our page and let's refresh this page okay so now we have this the next thing we need to do is to create a file remember this is a very small project 
we can simply use internal CSS, but I'm going to use an external CSS. So here, let's add style.css. So the next thing is to link the style sheet with our HTML. And remember, we do that using the link element. So here we can now specify style.css. So before we continue, let's simply see if everything is linked correctly. Here, let's say background color blue and save this file. Great. So everything works. Let's remove this. So the first thing we need to do is actually to reduce the size of this icon is really much. So let's go back. And we gave it a class of title icon. So it is this SVG. So here we can simply give it a width. Let's use 24 pixels and the height should be 24 pixels. Okay. So let's now start styling this page. And the first thing we need to do is actually to do what we call the global reset. So here let's add padding to be zero and margin to be zero. By default, every element actually have some paddings and margins. So if you look at this, you see this space here. So when you save this file now, the space shouldn't be there. So let's save this file and you see there is a global reset on all the elements. So the next thing we need to do is to add boss sizing and for the boss sizing, we are going to use border busks. This here is what we call global reset in the world of CSS. And almost every developer actually do this. So when you see a code base and you see the style sheet, the first thing you are going to see is actually this code here. And this is used for global reset. We are going to learn more about this because this is related to what we call the busk model in CSS when we start with the main project of the series. So the next thing we want to do is to actually set some general styles. So basically some styles that are going to be inherited. And in this case, they are styles related to test. So let's set the font family to sans serif. For now, we are going to be using sans serif. Later in the course, we are going to learn the difference between serif and sans serif. And also how to determine when to use serif and sans serif, depending on the personality of an application. So we are going to see this later in the course. When we are also going to see a little thing about web design rules. So now let's set the color. And in this case, we are going to use 444. And the next thing we are going to do is actually to reset the line height. And let's just set it to one. Okay. So next, let's move everything to the center of the page. So we want to move everything to the center. And to do that, Let's go back to our HTML and let's select this particular class, the accordion container, which is the main container. So for this, so let's set the width to 100 pixels. I hope that is not too much. And now we can give it a margin. So basically in CSS, margin is used to add space between elements so when you want to add space outside an element we are going to look at this more when we study the busk model so we have what we call margin left we can set this to let's say 40 pieces we have what we call the margin right we can set this also to 40 pieces we also have what we call margin top let's set this to 100 pieces and finally, we have what we call margin bottom. And let's set this to zero and save this file. Now, when you save this file, you see that there is a margin up here. There is a margin here. And also there is a margin here. And to confirm this, let's simply use our developer tool. So here we can inspect 
you see more tools and you see these developer tools also we can right click on this and click on inspect and we can also use the shortcut as we've seen in the previous session so in here if you inspect this particular element so if you click on this icon here we can actually toggle any part so here is the accordion container and here we see you see the styles we applied on this container so we have the width of 800 so if you toggle remove the width you see what happens we have the margin left when you toggle this you see now the margin is being removed here remember anything we do here is only for development purpose and that is why we call this developer tools so if you change the width and go back to your code you still have the width to be 800 pieces and when you refresh the page you see that you have the previous values all right so but this is very important because this here is really helpful when you click on this again you actually see that you see something like the brown the brownish color up that is the margin so we have the margin top we have the margin left remember we set margin bottom to be zero and that is why you can simply see the the margin up and you see the margin left there is also margin right when we expand this we also see the margin right now let's go back to this code for now let's just add a background color on this accordion container let's set the background color to be rgba and here let's use 00 and for this let's use 0 0.3 now let's go back here and actually inspect this container again now when you, if you look at this the margin is actually the space outside so it is the space here outside the content now let's go back and let me show you what the padding does so here if i add a padding let's say 20, 30 pieces and save this file you see now there is a space inside the container so so the space inside this here is what we call the padding so when you inspect this again let's go back to the style toggle this padding you see it is gone when you click on it you see now you see the greenish color so that is the padding and it is the, the space inside the container and the outer part the space outside is the margin so basically we use margin most times to add space between two different elements we are going to look at this in details later so for now i'm going to remove the background color we don't need it for the padding we don't need it now the next thing we want to do is actually if you look at the goal you see that everything is at the center of the page and a very nice trick that you see every developer uses every day is actually this particular trick i want to show you to push this content to the center all you need to do is here we just have to change instead of setting the margin left and right instead of setting the margin left and right like this so in this case it is not flexible at all so here we can change it to auto and here also we change it to auto and save this file you go back to the page you see that everything is moved to the center of the page now just like border there is also a short hand so in this case we can simply write margin so instead of using margin right margin left we can just use margin and we can say top so it moves clockwise so top we have 100 pieces right is auto bottom remember clockwise bottom is zero and also left is auto and now we can remove all this you see we save many lines of code and we still have the same result we can also do more in this case remember this is top right bottom and left 
So we can simply remove this and just write this. And this simply means top and down. So when you use just two, it means that this, the first one stands for top and bottom. And the second one is seen left and right. So you can either write it this way or you write it specifying the four values or you write it one after the other. But in practice, we use the short end. All right. And this still gives us the same result. So the next thing we need to do now, let's look at the HTML. So we can simply style this accordion div. So this particular div here. All right. So we have the accordion class. And for this accordion class, the first thing we need to do is actually to, for now, let's add a background color and see something. So RGBA, we have 000, let's use 0 0.3. And now we have this. So first, remember, we want to add space inside this container. And I can hear you say padding. Great. So let's set the padding to 24 pieces. So next, let's actually style this paragraph and also the list items. So that is this session. So we want to style this particular content and the paragraph inside the content. So first, let's just grab the dot content and the paragraph inside the content. And first, let's just give this a margin bottom of let's use 24 pieces. Okay. And let's increase the line height. So for the line height, we can simply use, let's use 1.5. And now we have this. So now let's type the UL. So for the UL inside the content, first, let's remove the list tie. So we simply write list tie. And in this case, we set it to none. And if we look at the finished project, you see this, this space between them. So to do that, let's actually practice our flexbox. So we remember, we can simply use flexbox to achieve the result perfectly. Because if we use margin or padding on this, that means we are going to add extra space here. And here we simply set display to flex. And you know what that is going to do. Remember the last um, series? Display flex, we actually set everything in one row. That means we have to change the flex direction. And here we change it back to colon. And the next thing we want to do is actually to add a gap. And in this case, let's simply add a gap of 12 pieces. And now we have this. But let's look at the finished project. This is actually more than 12 pieces. So let's increase this to 18 pieces. All right. This looks better. The next thing we want to do is actually to achieve this. So we want to have the icon in this particular session, in this particular part, and we want the paragraph to be here and the remaining content to be in here under this paragraph. And this is a simple call to CSS grid. Remember in the last part, we asked the question, when are we supposed to use Flexbox and when are we supposed to use CSS grid? And if you look at this, this here is a colon. This here is a colon. This is a row and this is a row. So, and this leads us to CSS grid. So this is a good use case for CSS grid. And to do that, we have to go back to the, con the accordion itself. So this is the accordion itself. And for this, first we need to set the display simply to grid. And we want to set the grid template columns. In this case, we are going to use one FR because we want the, the content here, the paragraph to actually take any remaining space. And the other one should just be auto. But now we have to go back to this particular. So if you inspect this page, let's inspect this. And now toggle on the grid. Let's look for the grid. So here you see the grid. You see? Click on this. 
and now you see this and you can see these particular grid lines here so let's just go back and push this to just pan within this so to do that we have to go to this particular container which we gave the class of content so let's select this and it is the dot content simply set the grid colon to simply span to and now let's go back here and we need to add a gap so we need the row gap remember we can simply use gap and set this to 24 episodes but i think we should use the row gap and colon gap so here instead of using gap we can simply use the row gap so we want to set a gap between this and this so let's increase this let's use 32 pieces and now we have this and for the colon gap let's set this to 24 pieces so if you look at the finished project we have to remove this background color so here we need to remove the background color and now we have this but this is actually different from this because here there is something here and in css this is what we call the boss shadow and that should be on this accordion so remember on this this is the old accordion to add a box shadow all you need to write is just the same name box shadow and the box shadow takes many property value so the first one is what we call the horizontal offset so here we can say 20 pieces for instance and we have what we call the vertical offset here let's say 32 pieces now we also have what we call the blur so for the blur let's use 24 pieces and the next one is what we call the scale which is always optional so here if you add maybe 20 pieces and the final one is what we call the color and we simply use rgba in this case the first should be zero second zero third zero that is red green blue and now we need to add the alpha ratio so let's simply use 0 0.1 now when you go to the page you see this now this is the box shadow you see this shadow in here and we are going to look more into box shadow later because it's very important and you don't just use box shadow anyhow like there are some guidelines there are some rules why using box shadow now if you look at this actually this seems like the light is coming towards this direction look at the finished project so it is very simple so your box shadow should be minimal so in this case for the horizontal offset let's actually leave this at zero there is no need for the offset for the vertical offset also let's leave it at zero but for the blur let's increase the blur to 32 pieces and save this file again now we don't need this so now we have this the next thing we want to work on is actually this icon let's go back to this icon which is the title icon first let's change the cursor so we change the cursor to pointer and now look at the arrow when you move on this so it changes to pointer and to close this up all we need to do is to go to the container hosting all this content and set the display to none so and that is the contents container so the content here we simply set display to none and save this file now we have this so for now let's go back to our html and here let's copy this class of accordion so we can repeat this several times so now we have this now when you look at the finished project and look at this our own seems like everything is like matched together so there is no space here unlike this there is a space there is a space so here there is no space 
and also we need to check the contrast but before that let's actually add the space and to do that it is very simple we just have to go to the accordion container and to add the space we can simply use flex bus so here we can set the display to flex and now we have this which is very bad so we have to change the flex direction to column and now we are back to the previous state so now we just have to use the gap so here let's add the gap and for the gap let's simply add a gap of 12 pieces i think we should increase that to 32 pieces great and this is almost the same thing as the finished project so the final thing we need to do is actually to see a way of opening this up and also adding this color so all we need to do is to go back to the html and that is on the third one so on the third div so let's come back here we have this first div this is the second one and this is the third one so on the third one let's add another class here and call this show so now we have another class so dot show containing a class of title and also dot show containing a class of so this icon we call it title icon we want to set the color to 3232d3 let's use this okay and now we have this so the next thing we want to do is to actually grab the dot show so remember we set the content so here we set the content to display none so all we just have to do is to say that is any element with a class of content inside an element with a class of show we simply want to set the display to block and here is our own version of the product i hope you enjoyed this as we are going to be building more components and after that we combine everything and make a complete real world website please kindly go through what we've done if you have a question please drop your question in the comment section and please i would recommend you apply this knowledge to build different accordion components because when you are able to build these components building any website from scratch will not be a problem for you thank you so much and, and please do not forget to like this video see you in the next part thank you and bye